Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be talking about management agreement. Uh, management agreement is agreement between owner and real estate manager. Uh, different uh, concepts relating to that will be discussed in this particular session. So let's start. So first, a table of content. We are talking about management agreement and plan. So we'll see what is management agreement, what is the management plan. We'll be discussing that. Then. We'll be uh, uh, looking at different components of the management agreement. Uh, we will also look at uh, uh, the differences between management agreement and plan. Uh, then uh, how the financial management is related to management agreement. There are some parts of man financial arrangements which are there in this agreement. Then uh, uh, reports which are given to the owner, timely reports. How that is um, um, that is how that is planned. So that will be there in this. Then we will talk about general property management, which is uh, of course part of the uh, managing of any property. Then some legal and ethical considerations which are there for uh, the management and the owner agreement. And then we'll talk about owner's obligation, uh, certain obligations which are there from the owner side. Then uh, insurance responsibilities which have to be there, kept to be kept uh, uh, certain insurances, then reserve fund, we will understand what that is. Then uh, how the uh, regulations come into picture, how we have to be compliant with them. Then compensation, uh, wo, uh, how the management services will be compensated, what are the uh, modalities of that. Then uh, the management plan, uh, its component structure, and then the one, uh, in the end, we have defining owner's goals. We will be uh, also uh, talking about uh, what are the owner's goal in this context. So uh, let's talk about uh, the management agreement and plan. So management agreement and plan serve as foundational documents in property management, laying out the framework for the management of real estate assets. These documents are essential for establishing clear guidelines delineating roles and responsibilities and formalizing financial arrangements between property owners and managers. Now there are certain key components of it. So roles and responsibilities that has to be clarified. Uh, so management agreement is doing that. So the management agreement will define the role and responsibilities of both parties involved, outlining the duties of property owner and the property manager. This includes tasks related to property maintenance, tenant relations, financial management, and compliance with regulations. Then uh, we have another financial arrangements. So financial considerations such as management fees, of course, there has to be a fees which has to be paid by owner to the management. So that is there. Then expense reimbursements, uh, whatever expenses uh, will be there for managing. Uh, so the reimbursing of that, uh, so that is there. And then performance incentives uh, uh, are specified in the this management agreement. Then uh, it outlines the compensation structure for the property manager and ensures, ensures transparency in the financial matters. Then there will be term and term, uh, termination, that is the period for which we are coming into agreement. So that period and how uh, if there has to be a termination, what is the procedure for that? So that will also be part of this agreement. So the agreement stipulates the duration of the management arrangement and the conditions under which it can be terminated by either party. So that will be there. And then uh, clear provisions regarding the notice periods. Uh, if there is there has to be a termination. It cannot be just immediately. There has to be certain notice period for that. So that will be there. Then renewal options. If we want to continue with the same management, if the relationship has to remain there. 
so that will be there and termination clauses uh, help mitigate risk and provide clarity on the contractual relationship between both the parties the management agreement and plan are instrumental in ensuring alignment between the owner's goal and the manager's action so what it does is that it brings both owner's goal and manager's action in line so uh, this is important that uh, the clarity regarding the roles uh, uh, the owners and uh, manager uh, and what what are the different aspects uh, which will be dealt by the manager what will be the certain aspects which will be kept uh, with the owner so this uh, 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 clarity will come through this agreement between the uh, owner and the uh, management uh, the manager of the property so that uh, is something which is coming out of this agreement so uh, uh, and then by clearly articulating the objectives expectations and performance matrix these documents facilitate collaboration and accountability fostering a productive partnership between property owners and managers then legal compliance and considerations which will be part of this also so it's essential for the management agreement to comply with the legal requirements and regulations governing property management legal provi provisions addressing liability indemnification dispute resolution and compliance with local laws and regulations should be carefully drafted to protect the interest of both the parties and mitigate potential risk so the clarity regarding uh, uh, legal and compliance consideration will also be of course part of this plan so in um, uh, if we summarize the management agreement and uh, plan play a crucial role in uh, property management by providing a framework for collaboration defining responsibilities and formalizing financial agreement between property owner and managers by ensuring alignment of goals addressing legal compliance considerations and fostering transparency these documents lay the groundwork for successful property management operations so then we move on to we are before uh, this is this was a brief introduction of what we'll be doing today but uh, uh, just so that have we have a clarity of what we have done earlier and uh, we then can go in the di right direction so let's have a revision of what we did so in the previous session we discussed about direct ownership reit and other methods of investing uh, which led ground on how to invest in um, um, uh, how to invest in uh, real estate so that was discussed in the last class so now uh, how uh, when we are talking about investing decisions such other decisions how the management agreement will come into picture so this will be clarified now so coming to what is management agreement what is the definition what is the purpose so that we will discuss now so uh, so first if we want to define so the management agreement is a formally formal legally binding contract between a property owner and a real estate manager this agreement establishes the legal authority and responsibilities of the manager regarding the operations and management of the property we have seen the purposes it defines right duties and compensation uh, that will be there then it sets clear expectations and guidelines so uh, let's talk about rights duties and compensation so one of the primary purpose of the management agreement is to clearly outline the rights and duties of both the property owner and the real estate manager it specifies scopes of services to be provided by the manager including task related to property maintenance tenant relation financial management and compliance with regulations additionally the agreement details the compensation structure for the manager including the management fees expense reimbursement and performance incentive we have uh, seen this particular aspect earlier like when we did very briefly discussed about the management agreement so this is there now we have to understand that when the two parties are coming into an agreement and they are um, they are uh, forming a team to uh, actually uh, manage a particular real estate property uh, the the roles have to be very clear what are the expectations from the manager so that has to be very clear so uh, so there are certain aspects which can create uh, confusion in later stages or it can uh, when the when there are certain disputes uh, regarding uh, functioning of uh, uh, the 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 uh, the management of a uh, uh, real estate then in that uh, in that uh, situation uh, we have we will have this uh, uh, agreement or this um, 
the the management agreement which we have in our hand uh, as something which can clear the doubts which can uh, bring the both the parties in line because uh, if we have everything uh, clear at the starting then the disputes the problems the situations of uh, confusion will be less of course there can be situations when they will arise but the uh, the agreement will guide us that uh, what we have earlier decided and we will have to stick to our uh, responsibility so in that way this will be there so clear expectations and guidelines uh, will be laid by the uh, the management agreement and uh, it will uh, create the trust uh, between both the owner and the management management uh, uh, to work in the right direction so uh, then moving on to the components of the management agreement now um, we have uh, first the full name and the identification so the management agreement begins by clearly identifying all parties involved in this the contract this includes the full legal names and identification details of both the property owner and the real estate manager or management company so of course um, the full name identification there should be no confusion regarding uh, the who the exact owner is what are their uh, the, their details that should be part of it who who is the manager or the management company who will be looking after the real estate property so uh, the complete information uh, so that who is the person uh, their identifications are established so the, the these will be part of the parties identified or full name and identification then we go to description of the owner's property then following the identification of the parties the agreement provides a detailed description of the property or properties that are subject to the management agreement this description includes pertinent details such as the property address where the property is located then the legal description of the property if there are certain uh, legal characters of the property that should be clearly spelled out then the size uh, of the property the type of the property and any other relevant characteristics of the property should be clearly defined and described in the owners uh, in the where we are describing the owners property then term of the agreement so the management agreement specifies the duration or term of the contract outlining the period during which the management services will be provided so this term may be fixed duration such as one year or maybe ongoing with provisions for termination or renewal so the term for which the agreement will be signed it will be specified in this particular part uh, then we come to the responsibilities of the real estate manager what will be the responsibilities of the manager uh, this will be the core component of the management agreement because uh, of course uh, the agreement is being signed between the two parties because uh, the managing of the property has to be done managing of the real estate asset has to be done so the what are the responsibilities so this is now one of the core components which we are talking about so the delineation of the responsibilities and duties of the real estate manager or management company so the company will be doing what will be clearly defined here so this section outlines the scope of services to be provided including property maintenance tenant relations leasing rent collection financial management and compliance with the laws and regulation so this is just the brief uh, overview of that but of course all the details details part of the duties will be given here because if the contract is uh, descriptive there is very less chance of any confusion later on then we have uh, the manage financial details which have to be uh, um, uh, which have to be uh, uh, informed and so the agreement includes provisions detailing the financial management aspects of the property so this will cover the handling of the funds how the funds will be handled like there will ha there has to be a procedure which has to like how the funds will be you know kept how they will be used so there has to be certain uh, uh, pre decided system for this uh, of course it is a financial matter need to be taken care of then uh, how the rent will be collected uh, what will what are the modalities of that again that will be part of this then payment of the expenses now how will the payment of expenses will take place such as um, payment of expenses would be like your utility bills your repair uh, cost and maintenance so there will be some cost associated with all of them 
so how will that be taken care of then budgeting accounting practices all this has to be clearly defined and discussed beforehand between the owner and managing team and then the financial reporting requirements that uh, how the uh, owner will be informed regarding how uh, what uh, the, the regarding the details of finances what are the uh, the like how the managers are taking care of this aspect so that will be there then of course in the end we uh, we, we uh, uh, in, of course there is one more essential part and that is reporting to the owners so another important uh, element of uh, uh, this will be that how uh, the um, owners are reported uh, uh, timely reporting of the day to day functioning uh, the other essential elements of the uh, the management uh, so for that there has to be a certain process so th the the types of reports that the manager will provide uh, to the property owner and also the schedule for such reporting so uh, because there can be a monthly report can be a weekly report there can be a fortnightly report so depending on how the uh, agreement describes this uh, arrangement uh, regarding the reporting schedule uh, a part particular schedule will be followed because uh, the reporting of uh, uh, what is happening in the uh, uh, property how it is being managed uh, owner wants to uh, uh, like have understanding of that and through these reports they will be getting all the information so uh, that will be there and then uh, there will uh, be certain uh, obligations of owner so we will understand now what are these obligations so uh, the in addition to outlining the responsibilities the agreement may also include a section detailing the obligation of the property owners towards the property and the manager this may include providing necessary information and access to the property maintaining insurance coverage and complying with any um, legal requirements then there will be also insurance and compensation another important crucial aspect so the management agreement uh, addresses insurance coverage for the property and the manager's compensation this section specifies the types of insurance required such as property insurance liability coverage as well as details regarding the manager's compensation structure uh, including management fees performance incentives and expense reimbursements so this will be uh, part of insurance and compensation so overall the management agreement is a comprehensive document uh, that covers various components especially essentially for the effective management of real estate properties by clearly defining the roles responsibilities and the term of agreement it and the through that it helps uh, ensure a mutual beneficial relationship between the property owner and the managers so then we move on to management agreement versus plan so the direction now we have talked about different aspects of responsibilities of uh, management then there is another important uh, element which is uh, a management plan so we have been talking about agreement agreement between owner and uh, um, the manager now we will also look at the plan side uh, uh, so we will see what this manager plan is so uh, the management agreement serves as a formal document uh, that outlines the contractual terms and obligation between the property owners and the real estate manager or management company it specifies the scope of services to be provided financial arrangement duration of the agreement and other essential details governing the business relationship we have just seen that it is formalizing the business relationship by establishing the clear terms and expectations uh, the management agreement formalizes the um, uh, the uh, the legal framework for property management activities help prevent misunderstandings di uh, or disputes by clearly defining the role and responsibilities of managers and uh, the owners responsibility so all this is being done through management agreement we have just seen that but what about management plan so management plan analyze uh, the, the the part of management plan is that it's in contrast to the uh, management agreement the management plan focuses on analyzing various factors related to property itself it involves a detailed assessment of factors such as the property location financial status market conditions competitive position tenant demographics and potential for value enhancement so that is part of the plan 
then uh, plan uh, management plan also serves as a roadmap for decision making and strategy implementation in managing the property. Based on the analysis of property factors, the plan outlines specific goals, objectives and action steps to optimize the property performance, maximize return and mitigate risk. So, uh, what are the key distinctions? So, while the management agreement primarily address contractual terms and obligation, the management plan focuses on strategic planning and operational guidance. Management agreement formalizes the business relationship and legal framework, whereas the management plan provides direction of achieving property related goals and objectives. And then we have time frame. Management agreement typically has defined term or duration, while the management plan may cover short term and long term strategies for property management and enhancement. So, both the management agreement and management plan are essential components of effective property management. While the management agreement establishes the contractual framework and obligation, the management plan provides strategic direction and guidance for optimizing property performance and achieving investment objectives. Together, these documents help ensure clarity, alignment and success in the property management endeavors. So, we can clearly see that management plan uh, and management agreement, there are two parts, no management agreement clearly defines the, uh, the legal uh, uh, contract uh, is a clear uh, legal document which is uh, defining the relationship uh, between the, um, the, the, the owner and the management uh, managing uh, it will be either a manage, manager or it will be a team or company who will be managing. So, there is a clear um, relationship uh, uh, between them uh, which is um, being uh, defined through this management agreement, but how the goals, uh, the duties which are there for the management, how they will be achieved, how those goals will be achieved. So, what is the plan for that, right? How to uh, maximize the returns of the property, whatever the business the property is in. So, how to uh, attain the those goals? So, that attainment of goals, that that strategy will be part of the management plan. So, moving on, we have certain responsibilities of the real estate manager when we are talking about management agreement. So, uh, so there are uh, certain duties we have earlier discussed about real estate managers, different type of real estate managers. Now, we will look at uh, the duties which are there, which are given in the uh, management agreement. So, we have financial management, which basically deals with handling bank accounts, uh, income exp income expenses. So, the real estate manager is responsible for managing bank accounts associated with the property including collecting rental income, paying expenses and ensuring timely deposits and withdrawals. So, this involves maintaining accurate financial records, reconciling accounts and overseeing financial transactions to ensure compliance with budgetary constraints and financial goals ensuring compliance with financial obligations, again a part of the responsibility. So, real estate manager has to ensure compliance with all financial obligations related to property including taxes, insurance premiums, mortgage payments and utility bills. They will require to diligently monitor uh, deadlines, coordinate with relevant parties and proactive management to avoid penalties or legal issues. Then the reporting. As part of the role, the real estate manager will uh, provide ownership with accurate and timely reports on property performance and financial status. These reports typically include financial statements, occupancy reports, leasing activity summary, budget variance analysis and other relevant metrics to facilitate informed decision making by ownership. So, uh, the reporting will um, inform the uh, uh, owner about the occupancy levels. Uh, they will, uh, uh, the report will talk about the leasing activities, what has been the, the leasing uh, performance of the uh, property. So, if you are talking about, uh, if you are talking about the office property, what is the current status of the number of tenants, what is the period uh, of the lease under which they have come in and joined uh, as tenants of the building. So, all these modalities 
will be uh, of course informed to timely information of all this will be given to the owner of the building by the management. So, these reports will contain all that. Um, then uh, uh, budget variances, if there has been certain uh, differences from what we budgeted, so all that will be also informed. Then um, coming to uh, uh, communication uh, uh, of the uh, of all this information, we have discussed that. So, effective communication is essential in covering conveying property performance and financial status to the owners. Real estate managers should provide clear and concise updates highlighting key achievements, challenges and opportunities and address any concerns or inquiries from the ownership promptly. So, when they will furnish these reports to the owners, there of course will be some um, concerns, some uh, questions uh, which will be raised by the owners to the management team and the management team will then uh, of course answer them, uh, clarify all the uh, issues, uh, all the highlights of the reports if there are any uh, qu specific questions relating to the numbers, they will be, um, they will be uh, answered by the management team to the owners. So, uh, then we have advertising vacancies and executing leases. So, the real estate manager is ta tasked with advertising vacancies, attracting prospective tenants and executing lease agreements in accordance with the legal requirements and ownership of leasing strategy. So, if there are any vacant spaces, um, they will have to uh, advertise uh, through different media options for uh, attracting uh, tenants to them. So, that will also be a part of their responsibility. Then um, uh, hiring and supervising staff overseeing maintenance. So, in addition, the real estate manager is responsible for hiring training and supervising property staff such as the maintenance personnel, leasing agents and administrative staff. So, they oversee property maintenance activity ensuring that the property is well maintained, safe and attract, attractive to tenants. So, all this will be part of the responsibilities of the real estate managers. Though, so, um, then we move on to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the financial management aspects. So, uh, there will be um, um, uh, like the duties part uh, which will be part of this particular segment of the uh, management agreement uh, will be establishing and maintaining separate accounts for property funds. So, one of the fundamental aspects of uh, aspects of financial management is the establishment and maintenance of separate bank accounts for property funds. This segregation ensures transparency and accountability in financial transactions related to the property avoiding any confusions and facilitating accurate traction tracking of income and expenses. Then compliance with the legal and ethical standards. So, the real estate and managers must adhere to all the legal and ethical governing uh, ethical standards which will be governing the financial management practices. Now, this include compliance with relevant laws, regulation, uh, accounting principles and industry best practices to safeguard the interest of the ownership and maintain the integrity of the financial operations. Then another part of this will be collection of income. So, rent, rent collection, fee management. So, uh, rent collection is a critical aspect of financial management. It involves the systematic collection of the uh, rental income from the tenants. Additionally, the re real estate manager may oversee the management of various fee associated with the property such as late fee, application fee and service charges. Then ensuring the timely payment of the expenses will also be part of their job. So, equally important uh, will be timely payment of these expenses, uh, which will include utility, property taxes, insurance premiums, maintenance cost and other recurring expenses essential for the upkeep of the property. Then managing debt service and operating cost that will also be there. So, uh, debt service obligations including mortgage payments and interest to ensure timely payments and compliance with the loan agreement will also be done by the property managers and the uh, payment of various operating costs essential for property management upkeep. Then disbursement fees according to the agreed upon terms. So, disbursed fee, uh, funds according to the agreed upon terms even allocating financial resources in accordance with the budgetary allocation. So, there uh, will be a budget which will be uh, the discussed with the owner and uh, the disbursement of the funds according to the budget that will also be there in this particular. Uh, part and then uh, uh, to meet the financial commitments and strategic objectives laid down by the owner and uh, manager's agreement. 
then uh, audits. So, there will be frequent uh, timely auditings of the, uh, the financial uh, setup. So, transparency and accountability will be the key here and owners have the right to audit the property uh, or their representative have the right to audit the property. This will be the, this will serve as a mechanism to ensure transparency and detect any discrepancy or regularities and uphold the accountability in financial management practices. So, uh, through these um, audits uh, the uh, owners will try to have a uh, check uh, and balance uh, uh, on the financial uh, management uh, of the, the real estate managers and uh, uh, so the transparency and uh, clarity regarding the financial setup is there. So, that is your financial management part. Then move on to the uh, reports uh, which will be there to the owners. So, there has to be some arrangement like um, I said earlier it can be uh, depending on the requirements of the owner uh, when the agreement is finalized, uh, how the reporting will done, uh, how the reporting uh, will be done to the uh, owner, uh, how uh, like at what uh, frequency the reports will be given to the owner. Uh, so, the schedule whether it will be uh, monthly, um, whether it will be uh, weekly, um, fortnightly, whether uh, six monthly. So, depending on how the owner and the manager decide, they will be then uh, following that uh, schedule for the reporting aspect. So, um, uh, the state, uh, so the reports will include statement of operations, income and disbursements. So, the monthly management report will provide a comprehensive overview of the property's financial performance, statement of operations, detailing income and expenses. Narrative report will also be there. So, in addition to financial data, the management report includes a narrative summary of the property operations, highlighting key activities, uh, challenges and achievements during the reporting period. So, this narrative report provides the context to the financial figures, offering insights into leasing activity, tenant relations, maintenance, maintenance effort and other operational aspects affecting the property performance. So, apart from just the numbers, there has to be a narration of what um, was earlier uh, numbers uh, like the last month's number or the last report's number and what we have right now and what have been the improvements, what have been the, uh, if there have been certain um, uh, situations where the situation has got worsened. So, everything you know, the, uh, the numbers will have to be clarified through this narrative report, how in, uh, the uh, numbers, uh, whatever the, those numbers are, how they have come up. Uh, what, what what situation led to that and uh, so there has to be a proper explanation of that through this narrative report. Then budget variances and performance analysis. So, a crucial component of the monthly agreement report is the analysis of budget variance and performance against established benchmark targets. So, uh, when we have a budget, we have a specific target and uh, if the budget or those targets due to some reasons they have not been fulfilled. Uh, so, the what is the variation from the budgeted allocation and from the targets which were pre-decided. Now, sometimes these targets uh, will be compared to some certain industry benchmarks comparison with the overall industry. Sometimes it will be on based on what was promised to the, uh, to the owners. So, the comparison will be made. So, variance between uh, this will be uh, of course, discussed uh, during uh, through these reports. Then, Coming to uh, the, uh, uh, so overall we can see that these are the uh, aspects which will be reported by the management team to the owner in the reports which will be sent uh, uh, through timely schedules, right. Then we move on to uh, general property management. So, advertising vacancies, executing leases, um, we have seen one of the primary responsibility uh, of the management is that to uh, get the vacant rental units uh, filled. So, that will be there. Uh, execution of leases between uh, prospective tenants uh, and the management. Then uh, developing effective advertising strategies, showcasing available properties to potential renters, conducting property tours and negotiating lease terms to secure occupancy. That will be there as the general property management task. Then staffing, payroll administration and maintenance oversight. So, management agreement typically assigns real estate managers 
the responsibility of staffing and overseeing personnel involved in the property. So, this include hiring, training, their scheduling, supervising staff members such as maintenance technicians, leasing agents and administrative personnel. Additionally, the managers oversee payroll administration to ensure timely and accurate compensation for the employees. Then uh, uh, the, um, we will uh, see that the uh, manager will also see that any violation or disputes uh, if they are there uh, due to legal requirements, uh, they will be acting as a representative of the owner. So, they will be dealing with that also. Then uh, so, there can be different type of general property management task and they will be fulfilled by the manager. So, uh, from, uh, uh, from filling the vacant uh, spaces uh, to hiring uh, right people, so all this will be regular work of the, uh, the managing team. Then uh, we have certain legal and ethical considerations which have to be kept by the management team. So, acting in the best interest of the owner that will be there uh, very much uh, duty of the uh, manager. So, as a fiduciary, the real estate manager has the legal obligation to prioritize the owner's interest above their own. This includes making decisions and taking actions that aim to maximize the property value, optimize financial performance and fulfill the owner's objectives. Then uh, maintaining the confidentiality and integrity. So, real estate manager are enthused with sensitive information about the property and its operation. It is imperative for them to maintain confidentiality regarding propriety data, tenant information, financial records and any other confidential matter. Upholding integrity in all dealings, interactions and decision making process is essential to earning and maintaining the trust of the owner and other stakeholders. Then adhering to the legal requirements and industry standards. A real estate manager must stay updated on relevant laws, regulation and industry standards governing property management. This includes law related to landlord tenant relations, fair housing practices, property maintenance standard, tax regulation and safety codes. Then compliance with the legal requirement is crucial to mitigate legal risk, avoiding penalties and ensuring the property's smooth operation. Then protecting owner's asset and interest. Real estate manager is responsible for safeguarding uh, the uh, uh, owner's assets and interest against the potential risk, liability and adverse events. This involves implementing appropriate risk management strategies, maintaining adequate insurance coverage and proactively addressing any issues that may jeopardize the property value or profitability. So, um, this is important that the managers are taking care. Uh, of the property as their own. Uh, they are uh, keeping uh, manage, uh, the owner's uh, interest above their own interest and uh, achieving maximum uh, return for the, uh, the property. So, that is there. Then we move on to the uh, owner's obligation. So, there have to be certain owner's obligation also. So, we will discuss this in detail now. So, Owners are responsible for providing sufficient funds for property operations including maintenance, repair and cap capital improvements. They will have to timely uh, provide funds to ensure that the property can address operational needs and maintain its value over time. Uh, then the second is decision making authority, approving major decision. Owner typically retain decision making authority over significant matters affecting the property such as major capital expenditure lease negotiations and property development initiatives. So, by exercising these their ap approval right judiciously, owner ensures that the management decisions align with their strategic objective and risk tolerance. Then maintaining open communication. So, effective communication between owner and the real estate manager is essential for transparency, accountability and alignment of the objectives. Owner should promptly address any concern queries or requests from the uh, uh, management team to facilitate the smooth operations. So, very important. Then compliance relating to adhering to certain ad, uh, terms which are there as part of the agreement. So, owners are obligated to comply with the terms and conditions outside in the management agreement. So, including pro providing ac uh, ac access to necessary resources, information and documentation and fulfilling these obligations ensures that the real estate manager can perform their duties effectively and efficiently. So, uh, 
approving uh, owner has to approve major decisions, um, maintain uh, open communication between uh, managing team and the owner, and of course they have to provide uh, all the necessary resources which have been mentioned uh, before in the agreement of owner and the of the owner and the management team. So uh, there has to be uh, transparency between the owner and the management team. There has to be trust between them, and owner uh, has to also. Um, uh, from their side perform these obligations for the success of the uh, real estate property for which the agreement has been done. Then moving on to the, uh, the next um, which is um, the insurance responsibilities. So the um, uh, property uh, owners they have uh, uh, certain responsibilities relating to insurance. So, uh, property owners will bear the responsibility of obtaining comprehensive insurance coverage for the property. This insurance coverage should safeguard against various risks, including fire, natural disasters, liability claims, and other unforeseen events that may result in the financial loss or damage to the property. Then, liability. In addition to property insurance, owners should also consider liability insurance to protect against potential lawsuits or claims. So this can be another part of uh, insurance. And then we have uh, uh, which uh, what will be the part of the real estate manager in this. So the management agreement should stipulate the real estate manager to be identified as additional uh, named insured party on all insurance policy relating to the property. This provision ensures that the real estate manager is afforded adequate protection under the property insurance coverage, particularly concerning the liability and other such claims. Then we also have risk mitigation. So uh, designating the real estate manager as additional insured uh, provider uh, uh, provides an extra layer of protection against the liabilities and other such uh, the thing there. And by ensuring that the real estate manager is covered uh, by property insurance policy, owner mitigates the risk of financial exposure. Then there are certain contractual requirements. So, requirements for real estate manager to be listed as an additional insured party in the management agreement. Then contractual uh, provision clarifies the insurance related responsibilities of uh, both the parties. So, that is their ins uh, the, the insurance responsibilities. Then we come to the another part which is your reserve fund. So, reserve funds are a crucial component of uh, uh, effective property management providing financial stability and protection against the unforeseen expenses negotiating the establishment uh, and maintenance of a reserve fund is essential to safeguard the long term viability of the property and ensures its continued operation. So, for, for this can be for diff uh, different for different type of properties. So, for let us talk about residential properties. For residential properties the approach for setting aside uh, fund for reserve may differ from that of commercial property. So, the sufficient funds are available to maintain, uh, maintain uh, to address the maintenance and repair need when it, when it is the case of residential properties. When it is the case of commercial property, uh, major repairs, capital improvements or vac vacancies minimizing the impact of property operation and cash flow, that will be the key area for these reserve funds. So, there can be differences in the type of property which is being managed. But uh, of course, in the commercial properties, uh, the requirement will be more in comparison to the residential properties. And then the, uh, uh, the considerations in negotiations, so uh, determining the most appropriate methodology for allocating funds to reserve is essential, whether based on percentage of income, expenses or fixed amount. Methodology should align with the property's financial objectives and the requirements. So, whether you want to uh, keep it based on the percentage of income or on the expenses or fixed amount, that modalities will be negotiated. And then the threshold and the trigger, what will be that? So, establishing threshold and trigger for reserve fund utilization. Uh, these threshold defines uh, when funds can be accessed and under what circumstances. So, uh, the proper use is done. So, for that we require these modalities and uh, this will ensure the responsibility and strategic use of reserve resources. So, the negotiating the establish, establishment and maintenance of a reserve fund is critical aspect of the property management agreement. So, that has to be taken care of. Then we move on to the next which is compliance with the regulation. 
uh, we have touched upon certain uh, the ethical aspects. So, uh, some of them, uh, some of this part has been discussed there, but we now understand that what are the compliance and how uh, we have uh, compliance uh, has to be uh, dealt with. So, uh, see property owners bear the responsibility of ensuring compliance with various government regulations, spanning environmental laws, building codes, zoning ordinances and other statutory requirements. Compliance with these regulations is paramount to avoid legal liabilities penalties and reputational damage, so underscoring the importance of thorough understanding and adherence to applicable laws and standards. Then liability indemnification, so management agreement should include provision for uh, uh, liability indemnification protecting the real estate manager against legal consequences stemming from non-compliance with the regulation. Indemnification clauses outline protocol for adhering and rectifying non-compliance issues ensuring that responsibilities or liabilities are clearly delineated between the property owner and the real estate manager. By incorporating robust indemnification mechanism, management agreement, property owner and manager can mitigate legal risk and foster collaborative approach to regulatory compliance. So, we can very well understand that uh, for those aspects for which managers are responsible and for those aspects of building uh, which were pre-joining of management of to that particular uh, establishment, there has to be difference. So, certain aspects of the property which were already there before the manager uh, joined uh, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the team uh, such as the, uh, the how the building was, uh, um, uh, was constructed, uh, where the building laws were f followed or not, uh, not for the construction of the building. So, if that part is there, uh, the, the liability will of course will be, will be with the um, owners and then uh, uh, after the management team has joined there are certain aspects of uh, uh, the legal fees, the, the, the regular uh, property taxes, payment and other such uh, important issues which will be there as part of the duties of uh, management. So, uh, through this uh, understanding that who is responsible for who, the legal issues uh, in the future if they crop up they can be um, answered. So, this is very important that uh, this is clearly uh, explained before uh, we start and become part of any particular agreement. Then we go to compensation for the management services. So, real estate manager are compensated for their services by property owner with various compensation structures available including fixed fees, uh, uh, percentage based fees and commission on gross receipt of the specific transaction. So, fixed fees entails a predetermined amount paid uh, uh, to the manager regardless of property performance uh, offering stability and predictability in the compensation. Percentage based fees are calculated as a portion of the gross receipts aligning managers compensation with the property revenue and incentivizing performance uh, incent, uh, profit, performance optimization. And then additional commission may be offered for specific services or transaction such as leasing or property sales providing managers with opportunity for additional earnings. Then uh, what are the details regarding this? So, specifying compensation details in the management agreement is essential to ensure clarity, transparency and mutual understanding between the property owner and the real estate manager. Uh, by outlining compensation arrangement comprehensively with the management agreement, both the parties can establish a solid foundation for their relationship. So, that is there how the compensation of the management services is being uh, decided. Then we move on to the, 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 next, the next part which is uh, the management plan. So, we have discussed that management plan basically tells us that uh, in which direction the strategically we want to take our property. So, that will be there in this. So, uh, um, it, will, uh, uh, it will encompass various aspects like operational strategies, financial projection, risk management protocol by delineating property specific information such as location, its physical attributes, market dynamics, tenant demographic, management plan. So, all will be there as part of the management plan. Then what are the components of the management plan? So, analysis of property condition. So, a crucial component of the management plan involves conducting a comprehensive analysis of the property's current fiscal, competitive and operational condition. So, this analysis provides valuable insights into the strength, weaknesses, 
opportunities and threat associated with the property, enabling property managers to identify areas for improvement and develop target strategies to address them. Uh, in addition to analyzing property condition, the management plan offers recommendation for changes and improvements aimed at achieving the owner's goals and enhancing property performance. These recommendations may include suggestions for capital improvement, operational enhancements, uh, uh, marketing strategies, tenant retention initiatives, and cost saving measures among others. So that uh, basically will be part of the uh, component of the management plan and uh, it's, it will help to optimize its performance and align the property, uh, align this with the pro uh, owner's objective. So by offering strategic guidance and practical solution, the management plan serve as a roadmap for achieving long term success of the property. So then we move on to the structure of the management plan. So what will be the uh, different aspects of this? So flexibility, the structure of the management plan should be flexible to accommodate the unique characteristics and requirements of each property. Tailoring the structure uh, allow, allows property managers to address specific challenges, opportunities and objectives associated with the property, ensuring the management plan remains relevant and actionable. Clarity and communication as an essential aspect of the management plan is clarity in presenting the information and strategies. So clear and concise communication enhances the understanding and fosters effective collaboration between the property owner, managers and stakeholder. So by adopting a flexible structure and prioritizing clarity and communication, the management plan can effectively guide property management effort, promote alignment with the owner's objective and facilitate informed decision making processes. So flexible structure which is both feasible to both the management and uh, uh, to the, the owner uh, clearly uh, defining uh, how the objectives, uh, what, what the objectives are, how they will be achieved and in a very crystal and clear format, uh, concise format, not very um, um, elaborative, uh, too elaborative. It should be enough so that, uh, uh, so that uh, the, uh, the owner and uh, the manager in case of any discrepancies uh, in the future they can always go back and discuss that this was, was this was what we planned for so that will be there so um, so this uh, aspect uh, it should be flexible but it should be straightforward and should be very clear in the communication then we go go to the uh, defining owner's goal here so we discussed uh, owners uh, uh, the part in the um, uh, agreement now we are talking about the plan. So uh, aligning with the goals of the uh, owner. So management plan is designed to align with the owner's investment goal which can vary from capital appreciation to increase the net operating income or consistent return. So how the uh, goals are there of owner and uh, plan should be according to that. Then um, what will be the support from the owners? So roadmap for achieving the owner's goal, the management plan outlines strategies and initiatives aimed at optimizing property performance by clearly defining and support, uh, supporting the owner's goal. Management plans serve as guiding framework for the property manager to prioritize action and make informed decision. Then let's go to the uh, uh, summary of what we have covered today. So uh, we started with uh, what is management agreement, uh, what is uh, the real, uh, this uh, agreement which is there between the, uh, the owner and the management team, um, what are the different aspects of it, uh, how the uh, manager uh, is responsible for uh, performing uh, the various duties, their financial duties, their general management duties, um, so all was uh, like discussed in this particular section. Then we moved on to the, uh, the management plan. That is how the uh, whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the performance will be strategized. How the best return which we can get out of the property, that are the expectations of the uh, owner and uh, how they will be performed by the manager. So that will be part of this plan. And of course, uh, all this can be achieved by 
by owner and uh, manager becoming a team. So, uh, through the management agreement, any um, uh, future issues of uh, um, you know disputes they can be settled uh, uh, in a way because we, everything is properly written in these uh, agreements in these plan, and uh, they will also guide the future actions. So, in the next lecture, we'll be uh, dwelling a lot more into this particular area and uh, uh, discuss this thoroughly. So, for this particular session, thank you.